Hello, welcome to Easy SAP ABOP. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create your first transport request, how to release that transport request so that other systems are able to import that transport request. So if you're not familiar with SAP at all, a transport request is when you make a change in a non-productive system, such as a development system where you're making a change to either, you know, customizing, which is configuration changes that you're going to do in transaction, probably SPRO or one of those other customizing transactions, or you're going to make a development or a correction to a report or a program that already exists in a productive environment. And then you'll be prompted to create a transport request. A transport request is essentially just a it's going to be a number it's going to show the system that the transport request was prompted from you're going to have this one request that you can either use to transport small changes or large changes you know, for example i want to create a custom report a custom transaction and i want to give users access to this custom transaction i could theoretically do that in three different transport requests one for each step, one for the report, one for the transaction, one for the security, or I could have that entire thing done under one transport request. So let's go ahead and go to transaction SE38 and create a new program. And this new program, once we prompt, are prompted to save it, we are going to get a prompt to create a transport. So we'll just say Z underscore new test program and I guess it wouldn't really be a test program if we're transporting it to a productive environment. We'll say create. And shortly, we're going to get a screen where we fill in the attributes of this program and we're prompted to create a transport request. So for the title, we'll just say a test program. The type of program is an executable program. And this would all be, let's say, customer production program the application we can give it an application for a functional area and then click enter so now that we've entered that basic attribute data for our program we're going to get into the meat of this where we're talking about the actual transport request itself so it'll ask us to choose a package in order for this to be transportable to another system it needs to be a package for which the transport management system transport layers have been uh, configured this is something typically that basis folks would do you know developers themselves aren't going to do this so they, they already know which packages they need to choose and that kind of thing so if we do just z star and f4 i think we already have one in this system go ahead and just search on z star so there's some stuff here um, i said z easy sap op this is a package that i created earlier for this if we weren't going to transport this, if this were just going to be a test program or a program that we're only going to run in our development system, we could click local object down here and that's going to assign it to package dollar sign TMP. And that dollar sign TMP is going to be something that is never transported. It's just going to be something for the development system. But in this case, we're going to transport this program to either a quality assurance or an actual productive system. So we're going to choose a package that is configured for the transport management system. We'll choose Easy SAP ABOP. Uh, I have right here a request that I created earlier where I actually created the package, Z Easy SAP ABOP. The request number itself is going to be the name of the system. So you'll see NPL. If this was a development system, maybe with a system name DEV, you'd see DEV, um, the number, not the number, the letter K, and then the actual number of the transport request itself. So if you haven't ever created a transport request before yet, this is going to be blank and you have the option to create request or view your own request that you already have. So you might want to include this change in one of those requests that you've already created. For this one, let's create a new transport request. And so we're creating a transport request to transport Z new test program to another system. So we'll just say something descriptive here so that we know what we've done. 
create new report program. And we shouldn't have to do anything down here. It'll show us the source client, which is our current client, 001. Go ahead and save this. So now we have a new request number, a new transport request number. I'll just go ahead and copy that for now. We can actually get back to that later on if we want to. Um, it's a good idea in source code to include this request number so that if somebody maintaining the system is going to look back later on, they can see this request number and see what kind of changes were performed against this request. And it just makes uh, tracking the actual change a whole lot easier. So what I'd do typically is I'd come in here and I'd say, post my request number, say my username, and then the date, something like that. And then the change I made. Some people do it up here in the documentation, maintain a change log, and then, you know, whatever they want to say, go ahead and save it. And we can work under this transport request as much as we'd like. We can activate this program once we've made the changes that are, we deem necessary. See object activated. And now, like I said, if we have multiple changes, we can still assign them the same request number. So for example, I got Z new test program. Let me go and to transaction SE 93. Let's create a transaction for this. So I'll just say Z test PROG. At like we're gonna create a transaction here. And we'll say in your test transaction, save report and selection screen. And I said Z underscore test, what did I call it? <laughs> I should know this. Z test, Z test, Z test. Z new test program. And we'll just go ahead and act like we're going to create this transaction. Act like we're going to test it. And then we're going to be prompted for a package. We're going to, again, we could choose local object if we don't want to transport this transaction. Click save since we do. And we see here, request, we're prompted for a tra uh a transport request this is the most recently used one so it's going to pop up here we can click on request to see our on transaction request our transaction request queue here we could do um, create if we wanted a separate request for this i'm just going to choose the one that we used just now so now let's say we have everything finished our report program is all done we have our transaction code. We want to transport this to another system. So in order to view our pending transaction request, we can go to transaction SE10. And from SE10, we've got our username here. Uh, we can choose our request status, modifiable or released. Go to display here. It'll show us a list of everything. This is where I created the package earlier. Um, this is the request that we were just working on. Z new test program, create new report program. If we open this up, we can look at development slash correction. It's the type of request. We can see under the subfolder here, we have the transaction that we just created and the program that we just created. So in order to release this to a system that will import it, be it that you know quality assurance system or a productive system, what we want to do is click on each of the main requests. We want to click on the sub request then click on release directly. So we'll see 900091 has been released to request 900090. So this is actually releasing this transport request where we have the development correction transaction to this parent request. So now we'll just click on release directly on the parent request. And at this point, once this is released, we'll get, you know, this waiting screen here. We will eventually have a status over here where it says that everything has been released. It'll show the object list, the request attributes, all that. And so now at this point, that transport request with those customizations and those new developments are available to be imported into another system in the transport management system landscape. So in our 
you know, quality assurance system, we would then be able to go to STMS, which is our transport management system. We go to import overview, and we would see our request in here. Since we released this to not the current system, our development system, if we ran the same transactions code, uh, STMS, or there's actually a shortcut, STMS underscore import, go ahead and just run that. It's going to show us all of the transport requests that we can then import this request into that system. So that's about it as far as releasing transport requests. And that's typically going to be a basis job, but in some companies you are going to see developers that do release their own transport requests and import them into other systems. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions on the transport management system, on releasing transport requests, creating transport requests, please let me know and I'll make an additional follow-up video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave me a like and a comment. Subscribe if you like this video and we'll see you in the next one.